previously on The Adventure Zone. You turn to see a nine foot tall person moving towards you. Their skin is opalescent and their eyes are all white. Who are you? My name is Chaos. This is a dream, but it is also a vision of a possible future. If you don't do what needs to be done, you will lose your clan. Hi, Chaos. With my help, you will defeat Grey. You just need to let loose Fitzroy. Do what needs to be done, and the dream fades. You woke the next morning from a strange night of dreaming, and the three of you made your way to the dining hall. You sit down at the table. I had a pretty rowdy, non-erotic dream last night. I don't know how you two fared. I believe Chaos was trying to lead me astray. I had a very similar experience with Chaos. Want me to kill a bunch of people. Whoa! Yeah, I know. Uh, It was... Very disturbing. So yours is in the future too. Yes, it was a. It was a. I assume now we all had visions of the future, and but then I did have to. Mur- I did have to blow up a man. I'm glad you all have gotten to know chaos. Furbo, was yours lush? I went home. Oh, well, that was good, right? That sounds good. I guess. Yeah. It was just a dream. Yeah, I mean, it was a spooky dream that the three of us all kind of shared, I think. So it was a a very special kind of dream. I find myself somewhat unswayed by Chaos's plight. Okay, so who is this Chaos person? Sure, they're, uh, it says what it says right there on the tin, right? They're the sort of embodiment of of, uh, Chaos. And also the powers that I have, they're the source of that. They're also the source of Grey's powers and... They seem to suggest that if I do go hog wild, I, we could beat Gray, and then the future that we all foresaw would be cool, and what would happen, and it's not the worst offer, but when it's it's a literally a devil's bargain, it seems like, mm. so. We are not taking them up on it, I assume. I think we need a game plan, and I do not think banking on my unruly powers is a great sort of, like foundation for that plan so maybe let's diversify our our power portfolio a little bit well i've been giving it some thought i think we need to build up our corporation i think we need to maybe do some recruiting Mm. i've i've got some people kind of a secret society i might be willing to see if i can talk to them and, and see if i can get them over on our side as to combat gray Yeah, I mean, I think we all need to sort of lean on our connections. I do think maybe our first step should be talking to the two people that we know have faced off against Grey, and that would be Hieronymus and Higglemus. I would love to get Hieronymus' take on this, since he'll be now able to add more than Bark Bark Woof Woof. I, too, would like to speak to them. Let's go. (laughs) <laughs> as you raise uh, up from your seats, you are momentarily interrupted in this action as you see Hieronymus take the stage. And he throws you a grin and winks, and Phoronymus says, Ah, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to everyone who went out on their real-world assignments. Uh, and also, we have a special guest lecturer for this semester joining us, one of the most renowned heroes in all of Nua. Please put your hands together and welcome the Commodore. Absolutely. And you see the Commodore take the stage in his full military regalia, carrying himself proudly, chest led, walking with a swagger, with a grin. Uh, that just is perhaps the most shit-eating grin you've ever seen in your life. And he's doing little polite waves 
as he takes the stage. Shit. So now he is just kind of sitting up there on stage next to Hieronymus. Oh, well, listen, he, I don't think he knows that I hate his guts. Right. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if I have to worry about him. I don't think he knows I, I, I want to kill him. Well, I do just want to say there, Count of Monte Cristo, that your revenge plot uh, was enough for me to pick up on, and I am a grade A dunce, so I would not sell him too short. Let's go talk to... Here's what's weird. Gray just, like, being here means we have to operate with, like, a constant level of discretion <laughs> that I do not think the three of us, either our characters or us as actual humans, are capable <laughs> of maintaining. I have to go to the bathroom. I stand up and start to walk to Higglemas' office. I have to go to make sure he washes his hands afterwards. I am following them. Uh, I love the furball. <laughs> yeah. You make your way out of the room and head to, towards Higglemas' office. So you make your way to the door. Then. Uh, come in. I thought we had a whole system. Okay. Yeah, come in. Uh, you open the door, you enter, you find the much younger Higglemas caring for his brother, who is currently resting on Higglemas's overstuffed, uh, very worn couch. I thought you were going to say dog bed. How's everyone feeling? Oh, shh, please. He, he, he's resting. I know I owe you an explanation and an apology. Um, I'm not sure where to start, honestly. Well... How about you start with what parts of the story of your brother getting turned into a dog by the bad guy was a lie? Almost none of it. The one difference was I could have turned him back at basically any point, but I was so afraid of losing my brother again that I wouldn't do it until I knew I could hide him from Grey. And that's why I needed your help with being able to conceal him from Grey. I didn't used to consider myself a coward, but I know I am now. I was only brave in reflection of my brother. I'm sorry that I used you, and I'm sorry that I lied to you. I understand. Idolizing the oldest brother is very <laughs> common. Seeing them as godlike, uh, infallible, sexual superiors. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 this is a common trait. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even deny that that's what's happening. Fuck. <laughs> right now, I'm. I'm still trying to get my brother back on his feet so he can tell me what to do. I think I think we need to get the wheels of spinning and st start building up the ranks. You've faced off against Grey before. Anything you can tell us would be pretty helpful and good. He was able to make it past my wards because he had mortal assistance. Someone at this school helped him get through my wards and past the doors. Be careful who you approach. So we got spies on the inside. Fantastic news. That's for sure not going to make us a big paranoid mess. What of his other forces? One of the hell dimensions is his. That sucks, guys. That seems it like a... Sounds so <laughs> it sounds it has, so bad. It sounds so bad. Really bad. I... V to contrast... He runs a hell dimension, and we share a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know that this won't help much, but it is one of the smaller dimensions. That's why he's always oh, thinking. Good. And, and why did you not say so? Okay, a smaller hell dimension. Could we get there if we wanted to do a little uh, reconnaissance? Everything in my limited powers makes me think that his connection to his dimension and to this world has to do with the God Scar Chasm. I, I have been wanting to make a field trip to the God Scar Chasm for quite some time because that's apparently where I get my uh, special sauce from. So that seems good. We need to get, uh, you know, as many fighters as we can. We have, in the last couple centuries, killed Grey many times. Oh, and then how? He's hey, back. 
this is wicked useful information. You realize this, yes? Like, when we were asking, like, what Gray could do, like, what you could have told us he cannot be killed. He has a form here in this dimension. Right. And we can kill that form and send him back to his dimension. But he always right. comes back. Okay. So we got to kill him in hell. That's very hand. That's handy to know. Thank you. I I feel like I'm ready to start pounding the pavement. Mm. Higglemas, before we get moving, um, I do want to say one thing, and you know that I have been suspicious of your actions and was totally right. I know you've had a tough time, and although you have sort of engaged in a dereliction of duties as a, an administrator of this school. That shall go down in history. I I do not completely hold it against you. Uh, As you know, Gray did destroy the apple that we did fetch for you, thus making your escape uh, impossible. Uh, Well, uh, and I reach into my bag and I pull out the second apple. And I hand it to him. Uh, If you're going to be half in on this thing, on this, by thing I mean war, uh, against the demon prince... We don't necessarily... I don't necessarily want you here. If you're going to spend the the whole of our war preparation effort looking for a way out, here it is. And he looks at you for a moment and looks back at his brother and says, Hero would help you. I'm in. Oh, thank God. Oh, man. That would have been so bad if you all had dipped, because, like, we have our we beef, but I don't know what we do. If we, we don't know <laughs> shit. We don't know anything. Uh, also, pro tip, don't eat that apple. It is mealy as heck. I can use this. Do you think you could brew me a potion that would shrink me down eight inches so all my clothes would fit again? Okay, so you are taller? Oh my gosh, gonna... much taller, yes. My pants are very short on me, like I'm a little sailor boy, and that's not just sort of an aesthetic decision on my part. There is one other thing. Uh, I have some cats that are good at getting into places. I was testing out a new spell on some of the feral cats around the grounds. Nothing dangerous, and I found that I could create traveling cats. Well, all cats can travel, you dingus. Oh, interdimensionally. Mm. That's that. Now that is new. That's a great band name, too. Sure. Interdimensional traveling cats. One more point of clarification. I don't control the cats. Have you ever tried Even to control better. cats? That doesn't happen. They just, I, they sometimes come back to me, and I've gotten pretty good at communicating with animals non-verbally. Okay. Argo, you see that with this level of trust and responsibility, he's standing a little taller, and you get the impression that this is a position he is way more comfortable in than being the one who makes the plan. Middle management. He's a middle management guy. Okay. Okay, don't forget that, and break! So where to, fellas? I think I will go to the library. Ah, with the power of books? Nerd alert. Okay, uh, so let's head to the library. Books, check them out. Read about stars and cars and electric guitars. Books, check them <laughs> okay, out. Okay, okay. Heavyweight champ, it is crazy as about. Books. Check them out. Check them out. Okay, we've reached the library. So what is, what's your goal here, Fearbog? Where's the librarian? You're looking for Sabor, the tortle is over, uh, you see him stocking the non-fiction shelves. Hello, Saibor. Oh, Master Fearbog. I have a lot on my mind. Okay, how can I help you? Turtle, can I trust you? I want to roll, um, it's called an insight check. Go for it. 
20. You get you get the sense that this turtle is on the level. Sabor. Yes. The Hieronymus that you know is not the real Hieronymus. The God Scar Chasm is invented. And the being calling itself Hieronymus wants only to bring chaos and destruction to this school. He is powerful and the only hope of stopping him lies with the three of us. Now, you have a library full of books, and in one of them, you must be able to read that a Fearborg can not lie. And Sabor nods slowly, and you see him look over at Argo for a second and kind of you know tilt his head inquisitively at Argo Argo raises his hand like he's scratching his head and when he does the sleeve of his jerkin um, slides down revealing his unbroken chain tattoo and Sabor turns back to you Fearbolg and says I will begin my research and walks away from his cart and heads towards his office oh sable y- yes congratulations on your promotion to secondary character <laughs> <laughs> so you go looking for your unbroken chain connection argo because you're looking to incorporate them into your war efforts as you enter jackal's classroom you see the commodore coming from outside the balcony. He sees you and immediately kind of sizes you up, eyeing you up and down, and he walks directly towards you with his hand outstretched and says, Ah, so this is the young spray that I've been hearing so much about. Uh, <laughs> I, it's, yes, it's, it's me, not, not, crazy about the terminology, but uh, yeah, uh, hello, uh, Commodore? Yes, it, it is I, the great nautical hero, the Commodore. You look so familiar. Tell me, young man, what is your name? Well, my name is Argonaut Keen. Sir, ah, your Shabriz son. That's that's right. I am. That's my mom. My my mom, whom uh, I'm sure you remember. I do. I do. Of course. It's a true shame what happened to your mother. Such a loss. Well, I appreciate you saying that, sir. There's not a day that goes by without me thinking about her and 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 missing her. And uh, and of course, you know, whenever I I think of her, I uh, I'll think of you, sir. Ah, well, that's an honor. It was such a pleasure working beside her, and ah, uh, it's a shame more couldn't have been done to save her. Ah, couldn't yes, have seen that, was, that ambush uh, coming. No, no. I I always appreciated that, that that you did the best you could, that you did everything you, you possibly could to keep the situation from happening. I, you seem to be doing well for yourself. You're the whole reason I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's flattering. Are you studying to be a hero or perhaps a villain? No, no, sir. Um, I have dedicated my life to 
working with you. I went into the henchman program here, specifically hoping that I would get the opportunity to serve by your side, sir. I've never had a spray as a henchman before, but I can definitely see the advantages. I'll keep that in mind. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go prepare for one of my incredible lectures. A pleasure meeting you, young man. And the Commodore makes his way out of the classroom. I fucking smash him with my maul. Got him! Son of a arc, bitch. arc over. Oh, spray. Oh, yes, spray. That's such a... You see, my mom, Shabri, was... Was a privateer for him, worked for him, and he betrayed her. She was set up, and he's the one that set her up, and that's how she died. So the fact that he's a, such a giant asshat, that's just extra. I mean, but it seems like we're going to do a smash on him at mm-hmm. some point. So. Yeah, we have a lot of murdering to do, don't we? It seems that way. So maybe we should put that on the sidelines. I, I agree. You make your way, Argo, you have met with the Jackal many times on the balcony. It is a pretty safe place for conversations. Okay, look, uh, I'm going to go in and talk to Jackal. He is another member of this secret society that I got involved in when we, like, almost after we first came to the school. You remember, Fitzroy, when I was telling you that I was, you know, looking into your past and trying to find out about your magic and stuff? Yep, I do do recall that. At no point was I ever going to do anything that that hurt you or or damaged you. It hurt was my feet. Like hurt, f- hurt my feelings. But but here's the thing: the whole purpose for this organization, their whole mission that they got going on right now, is to investigate the the magic that's coming out of the God Scar Chasm. It just would make sense to me to get them involved in our efforts here. Sure, Does that sure. Make any sense to you? Yeah, no, definitely. Okay, so I guess are you going to go ask for permission for us to be looped in? Okay, I'll go in and talk to Jackal real quick. As soon as he goes inside, I look at the fear bolt and I say, "Hey, I'm gonna sneak in there and be invisible and listen to what they're talking about. Do you want to come with? Because I can juice you up too." Um, it's not really lying, right? You just have to not say anything. I can remain silent. Okay, I use my new meta magic and use some of my sorcery points to uh, use Twinned Spell, where I can uh, double the amount of targets that my spell hits. Why don't you go ahead and roll on that wild magic table for me? Really? For this? Yeah. Yeah. I feel, pre- I feel pretty, uh, like I got it pretty well hemmed up. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Justin, could you build a wild magic table? <laughs> That was a good joke. Also, it depends on how many bevels and miters it's got. You know? <laughs> Three bevels and two miters. Okay, so I rolled a 49. You can't speak for the next minute. Whenever you try, pink bubbles float out of your mouth. That's Beautiful. great. Nice. Wait, I love Perfect. it. I, love I that. like that one. Argo, you approach Jackal. His back is to you. And he says, "I hello, Argonaut. I, I've been waiting for you, boy. I know. Listen, I as I was just saying to somebody else, it has been nuts. Listen, I got something really important I need to talk to you about. I Okay. I uh I believe we got us a demon prince on on campus here. Look, I I, I listen, this is going to sound like a lot. The god sarcasm popped up like 50 years ago out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, this wild magic started seeping in. Also, we had discovered that 50 years ago, a demon prince named Gray put a curse on Hieronymus and Higglemus. And the person that you know of as Hieronymus is the demon prince. Higglemus used a spell on his real brother, turned him into a really adorable dog. And so this Demon Prince has been running the school for all these years, and we're going to try to stop him. And, you know, the, the whole unbroken chain, you know, with, the, you know, when somebody needs help, when something needs to be done, when somebody needs stopping, all three of those are broken chain directives. Stopping this monster is a prime imperative. There's no way we can pull this off without help. And 
I need the unbroken chain to help. Argonaut, I'm going to ask you one question, and I, I don't want you to lie to me. Do you understand? I want you to be honest. How much do Fitzroy and the Fearbulg know about us? They know that you exist. We had actually called an emergency meeting tonight. It looks like there's going to be another item on the docket tonight. We're going to need to have a tribunal. And and what is that exactly? It's going to be a trial, Argonaut. Oh, yeah. We'll teach that demon prince to mess around with us, right? <laughs> the trial okay. is going to be for you and the fear bulg and Fitzroy. We're going to be on trial. Arnold. We're going to be on trial. Okay. Okay. And what's the crime? Argonaut, do I really need to spell that out for you? You're in a secret organization in which you swore not to tell people outside of the organization about us. And what did you do? You told them about the unbroken chain. You did pretty much the number one thing you're not supposed to do about a secret society. Yeah, well... Okay, if that's the only way that I can make my case and convince you that what's going on and to get your help, then fine. That's not what the tribunal's going to be about, Argonaut. You and the Fearbolg and Fitzroy are going to have to prove that they're worthy or else all of this, the memories of the unbroken chain are going to be removed from you and you're going to be out. All right, what time? Hi, everybody. This is Griffin McElroy, your dungeon master and your best friend and the master of dungeons and your friend that's the best one of them. I have a few announcements, if you don't mind. Please. P- please, may I? Please, mummy. May I do some announcements? Because we have a Bim Bam live and virtual show that's going to be happening September 24th. It's going to start at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Sawbones is going to be open and you can get tickets right now for 10 bucks. Go to bit.ly slash virtual. And uh, if you can't make it, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on September the 24th. Don't sweat it. We're going to have video on demand available for two weeks after the show. Come join us. It's going to be a real a real fun time. And, hey, we got new merch at McElroyMerch.com, including a pin of the month of Dr. Shaq, everyone's favorite NPC from the Adventure Zone Ether C, and sales from the Dr. Shaq pin of the month go to Benefit the World Central Kitchen, which uses the power of food to nourish communities and strengthen economies through times of crisis and beyond. We also have a Phantom Sea Coast Co. pin and a Taz Temporary Tattoo Flash Sheet. These uh, these tattoos are gorgeous. They were designed by Lynn Doyle. And sales for those benefit the Asian Prisoner Support Committee, which provides direct support to Asian and Pacific Islander prisoners and to raise awareness about the growing number of APIs being imprisoned, detained, and deported. I think that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. You had mentioned to me at one point wanting to talk to Rainier. Yeah, I'll go talk to Rainier. And the others are welcome to join me. You make plans using uh, the the notebooks of Far Speech to meet her out by the big tree. You guys meet there. You see her in her floating chair, and she's waiting for you. So, Rainier, gonna ask you a question. Wait, hold on. Are you taller? By a good eight inches, yes. I did, I cast a spell and it went kind of silly. That's sort of germane to the topic of conversation that we are engaged in currently. I do need to know, and by the way, I just found out that this works. I want you to tell me the truth. Are you in league with the demon prince, Grey? No. Okay. I trust you, and I also trust you to be discreet about what we're telling you. And I fill her in. I'm not going to do the whole... (laughs) Yeah, the the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, maybe not about the 
Unbroken Chain because I don't, you know, I don't know how wide this memory wipe goes, uh, but everything else, gray, uh, fake, Hieronymus, everything, everything, everything. Holy shit. Yeah, no kidding. Also, this we all had uh, temptation dreams from chaos, the source of all this uh, wild power. You had proposed marriage to me, which and is... she blushes. Yeah, it's something. It's something. Wasn't expecting oh. that energy. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I'll be honest with you. I did not mean to bring it up in this conversation, but there I go. We need some muscle. If we're going to take on Gray, I was hoping that you might circle the wagons, maybe call up your powerful lich father. You want to meet my dad? I want to meet your dad. Yeah. I think and she a, blushes again. Do you think we could make that happen? I mean, yeah, I, I, I could probably see if dad has any free time. You know, the Undying Lord is pretty busy. He does have the, the army of the undead, so. I'm sweating now actively from what you just said. We're about to go get tried uh, in a court of law uh, for what? reasons I can't. Again, I shouldn't have said that one, but uh, you take her sleazy. <sighs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll send you a message, I guess. Cool. So you go on about your business the rest of the day. You have a, a nice dinner. I would like all three of you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. That's a crit save. 20 plus five. 20 fucking five. That's a one. I have an eight plus one, which is a nine. Argonaut and Fearbug, you are out. Uh, oh, you, you're kidding me. You are sleepy boys, and you have fainted well away. Now, Fitzroy, yeah. perhaps it is your half-elven constitution. Perhaps it is the wild magic surging within you. But uh, you are weakened. You feel like you are not in control of your limbs, but... You are awake and aware as six hooded figures enter your room mm. and begin dragging the three of you towards the school. And the nine of you make your way across campus and they lead you downstairs. They bring you down into the forge. They lay you gently on the ground as you see one of them draw back their hoods, and it is Mosh, uh, the blacksmith, and he dons the special gloves that allow him to reach into the flaming forge, shuts off the fire, and opens the way into the Unbroken Chain's secret headquarters. As you pass through, the air changes. It is cooler and cleaner than the air of the forge. You are facing a dais on the far side of the room. On it are three chairs. One robed figure lowers their hood. She steps forward and administers a potion, which wakes the three of you. Another person steps forward. They lower their hood, revealing the Goliath blacksmith, Mosh. The responsibility of judging this tribunal falls to the senior member present. As chance would have it, a member senior to me is currently visiting the school. He then seats himself in the left-hand chair. All right, now let's see if we can get this trial underway. What do you say? And the Commodore comes around to the podium to sit in the regal chair and says, Let's begin the tribunal of Argonaut Kane, Fitzroy Maple Court, and the Fearbulg. And a giant smile crosses his face. Fitzroy, because you were able to uh, fend off the drugs and able to uh, maintain consciousness, you can identify, you know, who all is present. The Commodore, Mosh, and Marie, Mosh the uh, blacksmith and Marie the school nurse, they are sitting at the tribunal, but also present behind you are Jackal, Sabor, and Ramos, the shield work uh, teacher. And so the Commodore settles himself into his chair and says, Yeah, so this shouldn't take very long. Any questions? Uh, any confusion? Anything we need cleared up before we get on with it? Sure. How does this work? It's a tribunal. We're going to ask you some questions. 
and then we'll decide what to do. You say it's not a trial, but it kind of sounds like one. Well, a trial usually has like a jury. This doesn't feel super fair, if I'm being like perfectly honest. Let's get it started and we'll play at a disadvantage. You know what, Mosh? Please feel free to proceed and I will sit as the head of the tribunal. Yes, we we do have some questions, and Jackal steps forward, and Jackal says, if I might offer a suggestion, perhaps it might benefit us to let them speak about each other. Argonaut, why don't you tell us about Master Fearbulg? Um, I think he personifies honesty. He is, this isn't really helping. So this is the pitch for why I should be allowed into the secret organization. <laughs> I can't tell lies, and I'm honest to a fault. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm a, okay, I'm a rogue. You can lie. You realize that, right? I, yeah, and look how bad I am at keeping secrets. I just think that he is the kind of person that you need if you're going to take on these big challenges like this organization is supposed to take on. For somebody who needs help, something needs doing, or somebody needs stopping, you need somebody here whose word you completely and totally trust. Doesn't mean you're always going to hear what you want to hear, but when Furbolg is involved in the process, it forces everybody to be better and to think about other people and to, to make decisions based on that honesty. He's just a good dude. Uh, Argonaut, I want you real quick to make a persuasion check. Uh, f- 14 plus 2, that's a 16. You hear murmurs of, oh, mm, around, and you feel like maybe you might have won a few folks over. Master Fearbulk, why don't you tell us what you think about Fitzroy Maple Court? This should be great. When it came time for the Thunderman organization to hail a leader, We both decided to follow Fitzroy Maplecourt. He is the kind of leader one could only dream of. This is Fitzroy. Uh, Master Fearbog, now you make a persuasion check, and, and I feel like that was a fairly convincing argument, so I'm going to give you advantage. Too well. 14. Or a 13. I hate its lady's choice. And you have nothing to add? <laughs> I'm going to go, well, I'm kind of debating between these two, but I, you know what? I'm going to go 14 <laughs> Uh huh. plus one, 15. You hear uh, some murmurs too? Pretty convincing. And and uh, let's see, Fitzroy, I think that leaves Argonaut. I stand up, just very discreetly cast enhance ability on myself. The target has advantage on charisma checks. Your honor. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do it, coward. Commit. Do it. Your honor. My client, Argonaut Keen, is about as stand up a rogue as one could, could possibly conceive of. Now, does that make him a bad rogue? Yes. <laughs> Yes, he is not good at being a rogue. There is a certain amount of maliciousness that is mandated by the job. In fact, I would say he possesses much less malice than he deserves, given his lot in life and the the certain betrayals that were laid at his feet. I sort of throw that at the Commodore. And it's funny, you would look at our organization that we have here, a rogue, of a fearbolg, and a knight in absentia, and you would assume the rogue would be the master villain, and I would be his unwilling accomplice. But the opposite is true. I have never known a more heroic person than Mr. Argonaut King. Let me say this. If any of y'all try to touch a hair on Argonaut King's head, I'll explode the room. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know how I'm going to do that. But that is the sort of loyalty that he demands. Make a, make a persuasion check with advantage. That is much better. That is an 18 plus 7. 20. Oh, Five. yes. Yeah, like everyone, the sound of nodding is audible. They are agreeing so hard. May I say something on my behalf? 
Mosh looks up at the Commodore and the Commodore nods. If you know fear bulls, you know that we cannot lie. This would seem an ill fit for your organization. What I can offer you is silence. On my life, I will stay silent when needed. Marie uh, speaks for the first time. There is something else that must be taken into account. And she looks at you, Fitzroy, and says, I treated several students. When your powers ripped chaos through the battlefields, during what was meant to be a practice of shield work and dodging, and you unleashed a wave of thunder. I do not know that you would make a good fit for our organization. Okay, I'll come clean about something. I emitted a thunder wave intentionally. I am a knight in training. My shield work I thought was exemplary. I faltered and... I wanted to assert myself to the class, so I would never, ever allow something like that to happen uh, uh, without my controlling it. Yeah. How about a deception check there, Fitzroy? I mean, that was a 10, which is not great. Uh, that is a 15 plus 7, 22. Ramos makes a deferential nod, but you see that with that answer, the Commodore smiles, and he says... Well, yes, that would go along with another report we have from the Centaur camp. Oh, where uh, hold you, up. <laughs> I believe, tore the hand off of a wizard named Calhane and used magic and intimidation to cow a large group of centaurs. Is that correct? When, when you say you, you mean all three of us? Because... I believe I'm the one that initiated the hand removal. Yes, but I believe, as stated, you are the leader, are you not? Oh, yeah. Surely you know something about leadership through force? Surely you would know something about that, Commodore. Yes, but that is in my public role. In my role as a member of the Unbroken Chain, I operate... With restraint, can you tell the tribunal here that you have shown restraint? I think I'm showing quite a bit currently, don't you? I see. Are there any current members here who would like to speak on behalf of these three? And Jackal steps up and says, I, I'll, I'll speak on behalf of Argonaut. Argonaut has helped me. He's grown in his skills, though he may not be a master of deception, his rogue skills have improved immensely. He reminds me of his mother. She was a valued member of the Unbroken Chain, and she was our friend. And if Argonaut is half the member that she was, we would be lucky to have him. And, you know, normally I... I am senior to Mosh. I would be up there too, but I had to recuse myself so that there's no question that Argonaut belongs. And Sabor steps up. I will speak on behalf of the Fear Bulg. In my dealings with him, I think the Fear Bulg would represent a valued asset to our organization. And the Commodore says... Is there anyone willing to speak on behalf of Sir Fitzroy Maple? Crabtree. I have I have worked with the boy, but I, I'm sorry, Fitzroy, not enough to Aww. stake on my reputation on it. You know me. You know what it's about. Come on. I'm sorry. Frigate Dakota. A uh, point of order. I'll speak on behalf of Fitzroy. I'm still a member of the Unbroken Chain. Oh, Bazinga! Yeah. And Mosh says, "I uh, yes." Right. I, Here's my endorsement. I nominate him to become a member of the Unbroken Chain. That's great. And then I'll invite the Fear Bowl and this whole thing's over with, baby. It still has to be approved, though that does carry some weight. Well, I I have a closing statement to make. May I, may I make a statement? And the Commodore gives you a deferential nod. I am inspired to say this. If you want to kick me out of this group, fine. 
Because if you're not willing to help us and fight against this humongous threat against us, then you're not of any good to us in our efforts anyway, and neither are any memories of you, because you haven't contributed a damn thing, as far as I can tell. Oh! So, I ask that if you if you decide to kick me out and chop out our memories, that's fine. But if you do, please look into what we've told you today. And the Commodore says, well, it seems like it's time for the tribunal to rule. Marsh... Marie, if you would like to speak. And Marsh says, seeing the lengths to which his friends are willing to go to defend his worthiness, it's hard not to take that into account. And that is what I see before me, a cohesive unit. And Marie says, I feel the same. I see before me three equals, and I move to extend membership to all three. I and the Commodore says, Well, that is not how I feel, but I seem to be outvoted. I will have to defer to your judgment. Henceforth, all three of you will be full fledged members of the Unbroken Chain, but try to keep it to yourselves. So, we're mem- are we fully members now? Yes. We won? The tribunal voted in your favor. <laughs> oh, that's great news. So, <laughs> yes. The, the full, we now have the full power. In the words of my dear friend Gary Suckett. <laughs> this, this is what Gary says when a moment is triumphant. He always, cool Gary always puts people in their place. Hey, you, you ought to invite him to join the Unbroken Chain. I will never speak of this group. (laughs) (laughs) Can the three of us have a quick sidebar real quick? I do a huddle with you two. Argo, I kind of have an idea, and I kind of want to go after the Commodore, but I'm not going to do it unless it's something you want. I will 100% back you. And the Commodore says, now if you three are done, we do have the second matter to discuss, this so-called upcoming war that you are seeking our support in. Yeah, I mean, are are we members? Can we add to the agenda? Yes. Cool. Jackal, tell me about the uh, tribunal rules. Like, what what, what do you have to do to get a tribunal called against you? Something bad? Yes. What if one member of the Unbroken Chain was responsible for the death of another member of the Unbroken Chain? That would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, then I think we should probably call a tribunal against the Commodore. And the Commodore is visiting. Like, he's here. When else are we going to get the opportunity? Excuse me. How dare you? What possible reason could there be? (laughs) Yeah. Jackal, what do you think? You think that's tribunal worthy? I, it could be. What are you getting at, boys? Argo? Basically, the Commodore's responsible for my mom's death. He betrayed her. He was the one who set up the ambush that got her killed. And he is responsible for her death. It's my whole reason for being. It has been, up until very recently, the only reason I had for living. But, Commodore, you lying sack of shit. You're the reason my mom is dead. And I think it's time for you to answer for your crimes. You're about to get tribuned. And as you've been saying this, Argonaut, you you can see uh, the, 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 the Commodore growing red in the face and, and beginning to splutter and, and standing. But before he can speak, the jackal turns to him. And you've... You realize that you've never seen the jackal stand to his full height and make himself present. It's just never occurred to you how he moves through scenarios trying to be as inconspicuous as possible. You know, his whole existence is based on sneaking, moving through. 
And so he always tries to make himself as slight as possible, but not now. He stands to his full height and makes himself there. And he turns his eyes full of rage and hatred, looks at the Commodore and says, I, as a senior member of the Unbroken Chain, call the Commodore to tribunal now. As soon as this proclamation is made, this group, uh, whose entire ethos is based in order, erupts into chaos. The Commodore is on his feet, and he is moving towards you, Argonaut, as Ramos steps between the two of you. But her physical presence is enough to break his stride. And he moves to return to his chair, but Mosh says, not that seat. And he gestures to the seat that, up until now, has been occupied by Fitzroy Maplecourt. Let's say Fearbulk. Make a perception check for me. 18 plus 7. Yes. As all this is happening, winding between your feet a cat is flickering in and out of existence. I cast uh, first level divination, speak with animals. Great, 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 great. All right, well, now you can talk to this kitty. What brings you to the tribunal? Meow. Want treat? <laughs> fish jerky. Argonaut, I require mm? fish jerky and no questions. He hands over a Three inches. Perfect. It's tilapia. I chucked the tilapia jerky, three inches of tilapia jerky right at that silly cat. What do you want from this kitty? I don't fucking know. You threw it in my path. <laughs> <laughs> I have no quarrel with this cat. So let's bump back over. And Mosh, now sitting in the tall seat, says, Perhaps, Commodore, we should begin by explaining your involvement in the death of Shabri Keen. I had nothing to do with the death of Shabri Keen. It was a complete, unavoidable accident. Mosh turns to you, Argonaut, and says, What evidence do you have to the contrary? Well, she got this whole job from the Commodore. I admit freely that I was her privateer contract, that she worked directly under me. Otherwise, how would the ambushers have known where she was going, except for the fact that you sent her there? The ambushers could have been there for any number of reasons. The seas are dangerous. One doesn't need to be told where someone's going to be for pirates to attack. Argonaut, you've had a lot of time to think about this. Make an insight check. I have advantage because of the monocle of misdirection. That's 15 minus 1. That's a 14. Mm -hmm. And that's a 19 minus 1, an 18. With that 18, you have looked at it again and again. And seeing him here now, it clicks. He was jealous. The crew liked her better. His higher-ups, his commanders, liked her. And he felt threatened. And probably is willing to kill to protect himself. Okay. I want to make a deception check. 14 plus 5, that's 19. I know for a fact that the Commodore wanted my mother to fail. I have a letter that she wrote to me expressing concerns that the Commodore felt threatened by her, her success. He had made open threats to her that he felt threatened and he would do anything he could because he wasn't getting the credit for all these great things. And for that reason, that is why he wanted to get rid of my mom. You know, I, I love 
dad ratcheting up the already solid deception role by adding to that, and I also have physical demonstrable proof in my possession. I have this thing I can show you whenever, just let me know. And the Commodore says, you lie. No such letter exists because I never threatened your mother and I would never do that. And the Jackal says, Argonaut does not lie. I have seen the letter. <laughs> what? <laughs> and yeah. And suddenly, the Commodore, he says, don't you see what's happening here? These boys, they're turned against me. This is some kind of vendetta. They come in here lying about some kind of war just to make their way in here. This is all the lies from the demon war to this accusation. None of this. None of this is true. And Crabtree steps forward with a set of manacles. And the Commodore reaches into his coat and withdraws a vial, a dark, ink-black, smoky liquid, and says, if any of you take one step towards me, I'll smash this, and you'll all be dead before you can take another. Can the Commodore make a wisdom saving throw? Yes. Because I'm going to cast hold person. So he doesn't, so he doesn't do that. Yeah, he shouldn't have announced it. He shouldn't have said it. <laughs> he did announce now I'm gonna his make intent. A, I'm going to make him not do it with a hold person. Uh, that is 18. Now, but hold on. I have a thing. Okay, Titan spell. When you cast a spell that forces a creature to make a saving throw to resist its effects, you can spend three sorcery points to give one target of the spell disadvantage on the first saving throw made against the spell. So he has disadvantage and he failed. He's frozen. Uh, get the thing. And you hear him mutter a word as you all step forward. Coming through the shimmering doorway is Gray the Demon Prince. Ah, oh, shit. Who says, you called? <laughs>